Hi, uh, this is Professor Ness, and I'm going to be showing with you uh, how to complete your textbooks book requirements for What Hath God Wrought, The Battle Cry of Freedom, and The War That Forged a Nation. For those three assignments, you will comp be collectively completing uh, one document entitled The Story of Us, A Timeline of American History. This has been shared digitally with each of you, so if you go into your Gmail, you can open up this document in your Google Drive. Please know that this timeline needs to be completed by June 6th. That's a week before we depart uh, for our seminar. And the reason for that is that I will need to have it evaluated before we go, uh, as this is a college course. So let's talk about this assignment and how to complete it. In addition to sharing with you digitally the document entitled The Story of Us, A Timeline of American History, I also shared with you a document entitled Instructions for Creating the Story of Us, A Timeline of American History. I'm going to use uh, this document to walk you through the entire assignment. So if at any point you get lost, you get confused, you can go back to the document entitled Instructions for Creating the Story of Us, or you can come back and, and watch this um, video again. So let me start by talking about why this assignment. Then we'll talk about what, and then lastly, we'll talk about how. So why this assignment? First, when looking for assignments that supported the text for this assignment, it was important that we use uh, pedagogical practices that are sound practices, practices that you could transfer to your own classroom, so that as you're learning this content, you're also learning a strategy that will transfer into your own teaching. When we're finished here, you'll know how to do this. So you could recreate this activity in your own curriculum with your own students. So one, the first reason we're doing this is that it's a best practice. It's a pedagogical skill or pedagogical tool that you can add to your own toolbox to improve your teaching. The second is, this is a great way for you to learn the content. Uh, the texts that we've asked you to read are all fabulous texts, but they're pretty heavy, pretty loaded. So as you're doing this assignment, you'll be looking for key ideas, key concepts that are taught in the text, and then summarizing those ideas uh, in the timeline you're creating. As most of you are probably aware, taking notes and summarizing is a critical skill set for our students to learn that they can transfer to their classroom, to their own learning, and that uh, as Marzano as Marzano and Pickering pointed out in their text, uh, The Art and Science of Teaching, uh, Critical Skills for an Effective Classroom, note-taking and summarizing are one of those skills that students will need to succeed, not just in the, the public schools or in the charter school that they're attending, but to su succeed in college. So, um, so you really learn the content. That's the second reason. The third reason we're using this strategy is there's a lot of reading to do. So by incorporating the strategy, it will allow us to jigsaw the readings a little bit. So to cut down a little bit on your reading, but also ensure you learn the content that you should have learned in the sections that you won't uh, have the opportunity to read in depth. You'll, you'll be reading the entire text, but focusing in depth on one section of the text uh, so that we can complete this timeline together. And then you can look at your peers' summaries to pick up the depth that you may have missed when perusing the rest of the text. So that's our rationale. One, best pedagogy. Two, you learn it. Three, it's going to cut down a little bit on the work for you. So having said that, let me walk you through how to complete this assignment. Okay, the first thing I need you to do is to go into your Google Drive or your email and open up this document entitled The Story of Us, A Timeline of American History. If you need to pause to do that for a few minutes, do so. When you're ready to come back on, open up the, the video presentation again. Once you get into that document, we're going to make a working copy of this document for you to have and keep. So I want you to come into where it says File and Make a Copy. And we're not going to call this a uh, copy of the story of us. We're going to call this a working copy and then your name. Now, the only person who will have this copy will be you. 
Now we've changed it. It's a separate document. I actually have the original and this one. Now you're going to need to keep this one because when you're finished with this working copy, you're going to transfer everything you've completed from here into here. But we now have a working copy, and I would personally suggest, if this is a strategy you think you'll use, I'd go ahead and make a other copy of this. So I'm going to make a second copy, and I'm going to entitle of this Master Copy. So Timeline, Master Copy. That way, if you would like to use this strategy in your own class in the future, you will have this available to use for for any assignments that you want to do. You want to do a timeline of the Civil War? Great, you've got it. You want to do a timeline of the Progressive Era? Great, you've got it. So just keep that so you've got it. Now, I don't need to keep that right now. I'm going to go ahead and close that. But you now own that in your folder. So you have that to work with. And then you have this one here. I'm going to close this too so I don't, by mistake, add content to this one right here. And then lastly, you have your third working copy. And then lastly, you have your word, uh, your third working copy. And most of the work we're going to do, we're going to do in this working copy. And then when you're done, you're going to copy and paste what you complete from this working copy into your, into the shared copy that we all have. Let me start by reading this first paragraph. You can read along with me. Making a timeline from a Google spreadsheet. You can create a simple timeline in a few short minutes using the Google spreadsheet shared with you in your Google Drive. Follow this quick guide explaining the basic process. For an example of a completed spreadsheet, see the online instructions for creating a flipped classroom timeline using Google Spreadsheet. That's this video that you're watching right now. So let me show you first of all the Google Spreadsheet that you should be looking for in your Google Drive. It's entitled The Story of Us, A Timeline of American History. And I'm going to walk you through each of these tabs to make sure you know how to use them. And to walk you through this, I'm going to be using the instructions for creating the story of us. And to simplify this a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and try to bring up both screens at the same time. If you're not sure how to do this, I can show you how to do that. I'm going to go New Window. Let me bring this up again. So I actually now have this opened in two places. I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to minimize this. So I've got that screen open and this screen open at the same time, and I think that'll help me a little bit uh, to show you how to do this. This same strategy I'm using right now, you could do if you needed to watch the video and walk yourself through these assignments at the same time. Just open up a new window and minimize the screen. At this point, you can see both screens in front of you. Let me start by talking about columns A through D right here. I'm going to be using this to guide me, but I'll be looking over here at this screen. The first four spreadsheet columns, A through D, are the date of your timeline entry. You can just uh, enter the year, or you can get down to details such as month, day, and even time of an event. I'm going to ask you to put in as much as you can glean from the text. If there is not a month or day, then, then don't put it. Uh, definitely, I need a year. Um, if you're going into a BCE date, and I can't imagine why you were, but if you were to go uh, a BCE or before Christian era date, then you'll put the negative with it, if you can see in the example there. You also have the option of ending end dates on columns E through H right here. Again, you can just enter the year or you can get as detailed as you like. Um, that will allow the timeline that we're going to cr create to complete a digital time span um, in the bottom portion of the timeline. If it doesn't have an end, don't worry about it. You don't have to do E through H, but you will need for A through D. And that E through H work really well for eras. So if, for example, you were inputting an era, um, the Civil War. Now, if you need more flexibility for how dates are shown, you're going to go to uh, column I. Let me scroll down a little bit here. can't think of anything we'd have to use that I for. So really, you're going to be using A through H to put in dates. And one thing you need to be aware of on putting in dates, only put in single number digits. Don't put in March 4th. Just put in single digits. And I'm actually going to add um, something to our timeline right now for you to show you how to do that. So to add a date... I don't want to add a thousand columns. I'll show you what will happen if you do that because that makes a mess. See, I just added all of those columns. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to get rid of that. 
I'm going to add, only add one column right here, and I'm going to add an event. But if, if this event were to occur in, say, 1862, there's my event, and it happened on um, in June. So January, February, March, April, May, June, that's going to be six. And it happened on June 10th. I'm going to put 10. And let's say that this um, is a event that ended on a specific date. It ended the next day. So my end year is 1862. And it ended on the 6th again. But this time it ended on the 11th. Okay. I don't know display date. So that's how I'm going to add a date right here. I put in the year, the month, the day. I didn't know a specific time, and the end year was the next day, so 1862. The year was six, or the month was the June, so sixth again, and I ended on the 11th. So that's how I input a date. Now, how do I add content? By the way, let's say that I needed to add another day. I'm reading in my text, and I find another day, and this time. Uh, it's a, in 1830. Do I have to go up and insert a column? And you can, like, for example, when, when I said if there's one you want to put in this I column, you'd have to put it specifically where you want. If I wanted to insert a column, I'd highlight the column. So let's say it were 1830 and I want to insert a column before here. I can grab this column, right click on it, and insert a column above. You see how I've done that? I can go that way if I wish. Or that gets really onerous when you're talking about multiple uh, dates. You know, when, when we get done here, we'll have, boy, 300 dates on this timeline. And if you were trying to go in and find the exact date and, and people are adding and removing stuff, that, that could get difficult. So one thing that's kind of cool with this program is let's say now I'm going to add something from 1830. You'll note that that is after this row number five but I don't have to put it in chronological order. The advantage of using these digital spreadsheets and then the JS timeline program that we're going to use is it will put it in order for us as long as we put the dates. So we're going to add this one. This is uh, 1830, and it's say it happened in July on the 6th, and I don't have an end date, so I don't need that. Okay, so that's how I'm going to put in the dates. Now let's talk about content. So J and K. Scroll you over a little bit, right here. So column J's and K of the spreadsheet contain the headline and the body text that will be displayed on each side of your timeline. So to help you understand the headline and the body text, I'm going to come over and show you this timeline that I've completed at this point uh, so you can see the headline and the body text. So this is that timeline that we've been working on. Now, there's hardly anything here because I haven't put in much. This is my title text, The Story of Us, A Timeline of American History. And I have one event in here. This is the American Revolution. That's the title. And this is my text. The United States declares its independence from Great Britain. And that's the date I put in. So those first four columns. So how do you put in this title here and this text here? So then how do we put in that text? This is looking at J and K. So over here, this was my headline. And for each of the events you'll put in, you will need a headline. So I put in the story of us, a timeline of America, or excuse me, let's, let's look at, at row set four, the American Revolution. So my headline's right here, the American Revolution. So my headline was the American Revolution. That's what you see right there. That's what I put in column J. And then my text, K, is what I put right here. The United States, it declares its independence from Great Britain. Now, just throw a note about text. This is very abbreviated because I haven't put very much here. On your text, you will need to include a one to three paragraph synopsis of the events that you select. Now, you don't want to make it too complex because this is what's going to fit right here. But a one to three paragraph synopsis of the event, that needs to include what happened, who was involved, where it happened, and why it happened. The when it happened will show up here on the columns you put in on A through D. On this, the K text column right here, you need to include again what happened, who was involved, where it happened, 
and why it happened. And one other thing that, that I want to point out right now, were I doing this, I would not write this for the first time right here. I would su strongly suggest you go ahead and open up a new document. And as you're doing your research and you're reading your text, title this summaries for timeline. I would write those summaries. I'm going to just copy this so I remember what I need to have here. So after creating that document, I'd come over here, copy this. So select that, copy it. Come back over to summaries for timelines, paste that information. You noticed I said paste without formatting. That allows me to not bring in the formatting there. And as I'm researching, I'd write those summaries. So I've got here all of the information I need. Uh, event, I write my headline, Andrew Jackson, elected United States. And then as I'm reading the text, I'm learning all this information that's critical about him. I can write down, but I don't want to do to the election. That's a little um, narrowing. We're going to say president of the United States. Then that, that will allow this event to be more complex. So as I'm reading the text, I'm putting in the what happened, who was involved, where it happened, why it happened. So I'm writing that three paragraph summary. I can delete and change. Then I come back over here and I can copy and paste that text into here. That'll make it a little easier for you because remember, we'll all be working on this. And by the time we get done, this gets pretty heavy with text. Let me give you an example. I've created one of these uh, for my family so that I could kind of work out the program and show you a completed one. This is right here. So this is a timeline that I've been working on for my family. You can see with that text, this gets pretty hairy and it's not so manageable to work with. So I would strongly suggest you just write all your text and background in your smaller document, in your summaries document. Then you can just individually move each of those over when this is completed. Once you've written those summaries, you will come back over here uh, to do the J and K, columns J and K. So let me show you by example how you would how you would complete this. So I put in the year, the month, the day, and let's say that the headline here were Indian Removal Act. Okay, now I need to come over, oopsie daisy, I need to come in here and write the text. Again, I need to include a one to three paragraph synopsis of the event that includes what happened, who was involved, where it happened, and why it happened. And I'm going to type that right in here. Now, for our purposes, since we last uh, were doing this, I went in and wrote a summary for this, which I'm going to pull from my summaries for timeline. And I'm going to copy and paste that right here. Okay, so I come back over to my summaries. You can see I typed up a, a paragraph here that gives me the when, the where, um, what happened. And I'm going to copy that text. It also, by the way, gave me a new date. So I'm going to go back in and fix this here. And we're going to put in here, just paste that text in. Paste is plain text, that unless you need underlined text, things of that nature. Put that in there. And I've got to change my dates because when I started doing this, I didn't have anything specific in mind. I now know that this is May 28th, 1830. So January, February, March, April, May, this is gonna be five. And we're going to change the number here to 28. And I also had an end year of 1839. So I'll come back over here. I don't have an end month, but I do have an end date now, 1839. And I've given myself a headline and text. So that's how I add that event. Now, again, you'll notice that this event is after. So row number six is after row number five. That's okay as long as I put in ends uh, or dates and years. The program that we're going to import this into is going to automatically put things into chronological order for us. Okay, now, so L through O, adding media. Boy, there's a lot we can do with adding media. This is row L through O deals with adding media. So I need some media to show the Indian Removal Act. I can't just cut and paste pictures into media to illustrate this. I actually have to have a URL. So let me show you how this is done. I need to find media.
I'm going to go ahead and open up a new tab and I'm going to put in Trail of Tears because I need to have a picture with a URL and let's go images and from these images I want to collect an image that I think best illustrates the Trail of Tears. Um, I'm going to go with this painting simply because it's a classic, most people know it. Once you click on it, you'll want to go to View Images. It gives you both the URL, URL and the best pixel quality. So I can select this right here, copy that, and I'll bring it back over here. Let me make this big for a minute. It'll make it a little easier for me to work in here. Where it says Media, I'm going to go ahead and paste that URL right in there. Now the creator of this, I'll need to go back here and find my creator because you will need to um, show who completed it, who created this here. The Granger Collection, there's my image credits. Copy that, bring that back in here. I need to show my creator. Okay, so I have the picture. I now have my creator. So I'm gonna come over here. If you have a hard time, sometimes, I don't know what it is in the, the Google um, Google Docs. Sometimes they don't work so well with the traditional, you know, right click, left click. I'm gonna do Control V, that's my paste. Control C is collection. I need a media caption. So I'm just going to put Trail of Tears. And then we're going to skip media thumbnail for now. And I'm not going to do anything in type. So that's just our pictures. I'll come back to this in just a moment. That's how we import a picture in. So I wanted to take a second to show you what this would look like so far. So here's the event we've created. There's our Indian Removal Act title. There's our dates, beginning and ending. Here's the paragraph and here's the picture. Now, what if I didn't want to have a picture? Instead, I wanted to have a video. How do I import a video? Minimize this again. And I'm going to show you how to import a video. Again, I need to go in and find the video I want to use. So I'll come back up here. And instead of using images, this time I'm going to make this big, if you excuse me. I want to look for videos. And it's there's, there's one on Trail of Tears National Historic Trail on YouTube. Trail of Tears, We Shall Remain. Oh, I think I'll use this one. Um, so there's, uh, so now I'm going to come over. Okay, that looks pretty good. But what if I'm looking at this and saying, I, I don't want to use... A picture. I'd like to actually use a video that shows you that. How do I do that? Well, let me come back over here and I'm going to look up video. So I've got the trail of tears here, but instead of images, I want to go videos. Now, I know this will take uh, YouTube, it'll take Vimeo, uh, a, a number of different video servers, and to see which ones that'll take if you're not sure, you look up here and it tells you what it will take. So I know I can import Twitter, Instagram, or Twitter, Instagram, Flickr, Google Maps. I know it does Facebook because I've put in quite a few from Facebook. Dropbox, I pulled in stuff from my Dropbox account. A document cloud, Wikipedia, SoundCloud, Storify, iFrame. And it'll also take videos from YouTube, YouTube or Vimeo. It may do others as well, but I know it will take those ones. You can explore that and, and figure out if there's ones you want to take. But I know this will take YouTube, so I'm going to go to Trail of, uh, Trail of Tears under Videos, and I know this We Shall Remain, Trail of Tears, so I'm going to import this one right here. Pause there. And I'm going to select that URL, copy that, and instead of putting in the uh, media, the, the picture, I'm going to instead put in this URL for the video. Control V. There we go. And I need to figure out where this came from. Wrong one. Uh, this is from We Shall Remain, which is a PBS series, but I'm just going to put We Shall Remain. So come back here as far as media or creator. We. shall remain and I'll keep the media caption trail of tears I'm going to publish that 
And then I'm going to show you what this would look like um, if we were using the video instead of the picture. I'm going to have to refresh that. Here's our cover page. And this time, instead of our picture, we have a video that's embedded, and I can show you the video right here. So super cool that you can actually do that. Okay. Now, let's go back and look at titles and eras right here. You're not always going to use titles and eras. These are uh, I'll be over here so you can see where that's at. Uh, this is for P and Q. So P is the, the title and era. And most of the time, you're going to leave this empty. However, you will notice, I'm going to make this big here, that I have used one title, and this is for my title slide. Right here. So on this slide, I want to show, hey, this is the title of my program. So over on P, I've called that my title slide. An era is going to be if there's something that covers a long period of time, like the era of good feeling or the Civil War. And if I wanted to do that, what I would do is I'm going to come in here and I have to say either title or era. I'm not going to do it on this event because I want to narrow down somewhat. I don't want to have a lot of eras in here, but I would type in title or era. Most of the time you will not use this column P. One you will use every time, though, is going to be Q for group. So when you input an event, and I'll, sh I'll show you why you do this in just a moment. When you input an event, you will need to identify it as one of these categories. These actually align with our essential questions right here. So when you're importing a group, you're either going to say it's a founding document, it's about slavery, it's political history, social history, economic history, immigration, conflict, or foreign policy. Now, sometimes that'll be hard. And actually, this is what, where I can see it would actually go with a lot of different events. So I'm going to select the one that I feel it best goes with. And in this case, I'm going to put in social history. So I put in now my group. Okay, so to show you why these groups are important, I actually created a, a sample uh, timeline of my family. And I want to show you how all those pieces come together within this timeline. So I'm going to make this big so you can see it. But so this is my timeline for my family. This is my cover page right here. And then I go through different members of my family. But what I want to show you here is how I can do this by groups. So if I come up here to the top, this is, this, this line right here is showing an era. This is that era thing. So Rodney Parrish lived and died. This is his uh, life right here. I want to look at just his family, his immediately immediate family. So that'll just show me just his immediate family. This shows me just the in-laws that come in play. And this shows me grandchildren. So I can group them into categories. So I look at uh, my late husband, for example. He fits into the in-law category, and he's also an heir as well because he has an end date and a beginning date, as opposed to my current husband, who also fits into that in-law category. You can see he's on that line. His is not blocked in as an era because he's still living. So that's why you might do groups. So the last thing I want to show you on the timeline uh, the instructions are actually up on adding media, and that is for R, for background. Um, this is kind of a cool one, and you don't have to do it, but it, it really notches up your finished timeline. You can add a couple of different backgrounds, uh, and the instructions are right here if you lose this right here. But you can add picture backgrounds, or you can use just a solid color background. The default will be white, and if I go back to that timeline I showed you earlier of my family, you can see the difference. For this one, I did not add a background. I didn't add a background here either, but I did for my mother. I did put in a background here. That's the background picture there. I did for my father as well. That's the background picture for him. And I did for my cover slide. I used a solid color. 
So let me show you how you add a background if you wish to have a background there. Make it small again, and we'll come back into our instructions. So to add a background, uh, you either just find a URL for a picture that you would like to have as a background, or you can do a solid color. To do a solid color, you need to use uh, the URL codes for color. And if you'll go to this site right here, it will show you, uh, there we go, it'll show you all the URL codes right here. So let me come back in here. I'm going to make this big for just a minute, but I will definitely need to have this one back available to see it. And I want to finish up this Indian removal page I'm doing or slide I'm doing. And um, let's say that in, I want to start with a solid color. Now, if I remember my picture, um, a color I think that would go well with that would be kind of a dark gray color. So I'm going to come back over here and see if I can find a dark, moody gray color that I think will go well. Okay, here we go. Dim gray. So I select this color. I copy that. And then I'm going to come back to here. And I'm going to paste that background right there. So I've got the color in. Now let me show you what that will look like. I'm going to have to publish this so I can see it. And then let's go back in to uh, the timeline to see what it looked like. I'll refresh that and show you on the timeline uh, how that's looking for us. So here's our timeline. Let me refresh this. You'll notice this shows up every time I'm going in to look at it. I'm going to remove this, but I want to keep it up until we're all done working. So here's our event. And you can see I've put in the gray there. That's the color. You know, I kind of like that picture in there. But let's say instead, since I'm doing the video, I want to put that picture in there. So what I would do here, I'm going to come back and I'm going to select the URL for this picture. There we go. Copy that URL. I'm going to come back over here. And for my background, instead of the color, delete you, I'm going to add that URL for the picture. <clears throat> I got to publish this so we can see it. And then let me come back over here. I'll need to refresh that. And now for our background, we actually have the in -rem removal act, that same painting that I wanted for my um, for the original picture. So that's how I do backgrounds. You can have a lot of fun with this, and it certainly makes it a little bit more interesting than just having the plain you know, white background. Now, sometimes the white background works better. With this one, uh, I have a video in here. I think the white background works much better. You can kind of play that a little bit to see what works for you. And I'm going to show you, the final thing I'm going to do is show you how to publish all of this so that you can see your work as you're you're doing it. Because, again, remember, my, my first goal is to show you a pedagogical skill or tool that you can use in your own classroom. So when when you get done doing this, you need to know how to create this from scratch so you can do it for your own classes. So here's our working copy. You notice, however, that I've been publishing all along so I could see our work. So the last step I want to do is show you how do you transfer this information to the shared copy that we all have of a timeline of American history, then how do you publish it so you can see your work? So let's start by talking about the publication process. The first thing you're going to do is go to where it says file and you're going to publish it to the web. Now when it comes up published to the web, you need to make certain that you publish the entire document and that you automatically republish when changes are made. That means as I'm changing, you know, I made the initial site, as other people are putting in information, my site will upload with that and change. So I'm going to say automatically republish when changes are made entire doc document, and then I'm going to publish. Then I need to grab control, uh, control copy. I need to select that URL and copy it. Now for the next step. We need to go into this program download it for you here, timelinenightlab.com. It is a fabulous program. 
And from here, we're going to make our timeline. So I'm going to click on Make a Timeline. I don't need to get the spreadsheet template because we've been working off of a template. I am going to paste that URL that we just copied right here. And then I want to see what I've made. I want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to get a link to preview. And this shows me what I've done. So you can go back and forth and see your work. You can do this as, every time you add something, you can go in and say, let me see what I've done there. Okay. You could also, with what we've just created, you could embed this into your own website. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to embed this, I have a website, into my website. There you go. And now the actual timeline will show up on my ah, on my website. Oh, is that right there? So you can embed what you create. I think it's very usable for your students to work with. Okay, so that's how you publish it uh, using the uh, timeline program at timeline.nightlab.com. And if you lose track of that website, you can find it right here. However, we still have to get our information from our working copy over to the shared copy. So for that, I'm simply going to copy only these files here. I don't want to copy the whole thing. So I've got two here. I'm going to copy those. I'll come over here. I'm going to add two because we did two. And add that. And then we're going to come here. And we're going to paste everything we just completed. So you can do your own individual one in your working copy. And then copy and paste it when it's done over to the shared copy. If you want to check it again, you can go in and go to timeline and, and uh, download it to see what it looks like. Again, I love this program. It's best pedagogy. It'll help you learn the content. And it'll cut down on your work because there's not so much you have to focus on. You focus on those areas that you sign up for in the seminar. Read the rest, but focus on these so that when we're done, we have a, a working timeline of American history. If you have any questions at any point, you can go back and review this video. You can also go into the handout that I've shared with you on instructions. And if all else fails, contact me directly. But I would appreciate it if you go to the two resources I've given you before you email me. If you have any concerns, questions, contact me, and I'll look forward to seeing you when we leave for the East Coast. Bye now.